Highly prized for their top grade oil. We use it today as lubricant for precision instruments. And as the base for expensive perfumes. You're so right, Miss Perkins. Nothing has replaced ambergris. Now watch this. They're sounding. Will you look at that? How'd you get those pictures, Max? Automatic remote cameras. That's infrared film. It was black down there. Now watch. Wowee! That's it. Doctor, those films were technically amazing. Thanks. But technology is simply a mechanics tool. It's what the films reveal that's important. Mm. The high speed of the diving and surfacing and total darkness. Right. And without suffering from the rapid pressure change. When we learn how whales manage that, We'll have made the major contribution to human life underseas. That's my job. Well, I sure don't want to miss out on the major contribution. You uh, want to hire out my boat? At 20% of your normal fee, whatever that is. You're out of your mind. For you, 50%. I can go 25. Uh, you'd better go 45. 30. 40. 35. 30. 25. 20. <laughs> Where are your whales, Max? We've drawn a blank so far. They're around someplace. They migrate to cold water this time of year. Maybe they've already gone north. All of them? Captain, we're picking up strange sounds on sonar. Listen. You've got them! Those are sperm whales. Mark range and bearing. I have 120 relative bearing at 10 miles. They're on the surface. Let's go, Ronnie. All ahead, B-7. Roger, all ahead, B. B-7? You'll scatter them like jackrabbits. You don't like B-7? You prefer some other number, Max? Well, yes. V-1, for instance. We ought to sneak up on the herd, stalk them. Scotty? I'm a mite parson to V-5 myself. At 75 knots, Max, we'll reach the herd in eight minutes. If we spook them, they'll sound. But in maybe 15 minutes... They'll have to come up for air, right. That's 23 minutes. And if we take after them at 10 knots... That's an hour. And they might be gone. Sorry. Oh, it's all right, Max. We try to run a democratic navy here. If you don't like the captain's orders, you just feel free to speak right up. Which is it, sir? V7, V1, or V5? V-7, yes, sir. Hey! Easy does it. Range 300 yards, Captain. The herd hasn't altered course or moved to scatter as yet. Maybe they won't if we're lucky. Take us under, Ronnie. Neutral buoyancy at 50 feet, Scotty. 50 feet. If we can get under them before they spook, maybe they won't sound. Good thinking. Go.
Captain Fathom, along with Professor Jorgensen and the crew of the Argonaut, are involved in a scientific experiment concerning sperm whales. They spotted a herd lying peacefully off the Kuril Islands, but when they tried to approach them... Captain, something's happening. I can't tell what just... They're sounding. They're coming right at us. They're attacking. Steady as she goes, team. Stay loose. Holy jumping Jehoshaphat. Glory be. Man, this is wild. There's your herd of sperm whales, Max. What did you want to ask them? I had it all written down, but I can't remember what it was. Hey, Skipper. This big beauty likes me. For Din Din, especially. What are they going to do? They're mostly curious. We'd better angle for the surface, Max. I don't want a chance putting one to sleep down here, no. Ease her topside, Ronnie. There she blows, Captain. Pick your target, Max. That bull, just off to our right. 20 points to starboard, Ronnie. Point your bow in his forward quarter. Aye, aye, sir. You're not going to hurt him, Captain. He won't even feel it, Perky. He'll just suddenly drop off for a cat nap. Or a whale nap, I guess. It's a small sleep dart made out of gelatin. Give us just enough time to attach my instrument package. Easy. That's got it. Now. OK, we can move in now. Ease alongside, Ronnie. Easy. You're sure he's asleep now? He's asleep. That's perfect, Ronnie. Hold it right there now. It's done. We did it. Good show, Max. I... What now, Max? You want to tag along after that whale when he takes off? It's not vital. This black box jazz will record his every movement, his entire physiology for the next five days. But you'd still like to follow him? If it's included in the rate, yes. He's moving out, Captain. OK, driver. Follow that whale. Been a long night, Ronnie. You getting tired? Not a bit, sir. Hey, I think you went under. Yep, he's headed for the deep. I don't like this water. But, well, keep after him. suggestion of Professor Max Jorgensen, Captain Fathom and his crew have attached a scientific metering device to the back of a giant sperm whale. With this device transmitting a signal back to the Argonaut, they were able to follow the whale and observe his behavior. However, when the whale dove into deep water and the Argonaut tried to follow... Everybody okay? Yes, okay. Yes. That whale has sonar, you know. We've got sonar, too, when we're hooked up with it. Damage control, Pete. What have we got? We're OK, Skipper. 
Just scrape bottom. What's Ronnie doing up there? Playing chicken with the mountains? Thanks, old buddy. Plainsman, lock onto sonar avoidance control. Max, give him a signal to steer by so he's not chasing mountain peaks. It's on, sir. Here you go. Just keep the needle centered. Thanks. It's not the lad's fault, Skipper. Me? I would have tore through that mountain. I don't doubt it. But I'm not blaming Ronnie for my idiot goof up. Mm-hmm. Sir, I'm almost sure of it. The whales have a built-in hydraulic pressure system. Our specimen has a cavity in its head storing about six gallons of high-quality oil. He draws from this supply and pumps it through a blubber vascular network to maintain constant structural integrity of his hull. That's how he's able to dive and surface so rapidly without suffering the effects of pressure change. It's not a case of equalizing pressure. It's a case of modifying shell integrity to withstand pressure. Very interesting. Yes, it is. But we've got a shallow water problem, Max. What? How do you mean? We're in the Curly Trench and moving on to a broad, sloping coral plateau. We're giving away water, and we could run out of it. Not so good. If our whale starts getting false sonar echoes in shallow water, he could get himself landlocked. And what could happen to your whale, friend, could happen to us. We're on sonar avoidance control, and we've got to stay on it if we want to tag after that ball. Trouble, Captain. I've got to override sonar, or we're going to pile up. Oh, good heavens. I wasn't watching. We're surrounded by echoes. Plane up. Head for daylight. I don't know why. I did it again. I don't know how, but I did it again. No. If I hadn't wanted to trail after that whale, I could have helped by blowing me tanks, I guess. All right. We've all managed somehow to do nothing right, but we're all still alive. Somebody up there must like us, though I can't imagine why. Let's all resolve to do a little better, shall we? And maybe, just maybe, we can make it to the nearest island. Mm. <clears throat> without fracturing ourselves. At least we can try. Right? I... I don't know if you noticed, Doctor. Your gauge needle is almost centered on that island. I know. The whale stopped traveling. He's landlocked somewhere around here. Probably die if we don't find him. Fathom! Shrieking Mountain. Captain Fathom and the crew of the Argonaut are trailing a giant sperm whale in order to scientifically observe his sonar patterns. While following the whale too closely, they sustained damage to the Argonaut's diving plane and are forced to put into a seemingly deserted island for repairs. The place looks creepy enough. It doesn't look like the island's seen much life since its World War II days. No. Oh. It was probably a Japanese base. Not much to show for all the bombing and shelling for the prize, is there? Surprised it isn't inhabited, though. Maybe that volcano has something to do with it. Wouldn't take much of an eruption to wipe the whole island out. I was wondering, why don't we scout around the island perimeter? I'll bite. Why? The homing gauge I gave Ronnie centered on the island as we were coming in. My other readings indicated that our whale friend stopped traveling. Hmm. You think he beached himself around here? Hey, Skipper! Yo, Pete. I've got to fabricate and weld up a whole new diving plane. 
We're stuck until morning. Roger. Well, we've got nothing but time, Max. Let's get the sea dart and have a look around, huh? All systems are green, Scotty. Spring when ready. Roger. Here you go. We'll grab some sky so we can get an overall look first, Max. Right. See anything? Not yet. Not a thing. The beaches look clean. Right. There's some other islands eight or ten miles off. How about those? No good. My homing gauge is sensitive. The needle's centered on that island below. And that's where the whale has got to be. You're the doctor. Let's go below. Out there, Max. Coral reef. I see them. Whale skeletons. They're whale skeletons, all right. But our bull isn't among them. Looks like this island is on the main migration highway to the north for whales. locating that whale, Max, and it's going to be dark pretty soon. I know. I don't understand why we... Can we take one more quick swing around? Maybe we missed something. Sure. Hello, Argonaut. You there, Scotty? Hello, Argonaut. Hello, hello. Scotty? Argonaut! Argonaut, come in, Argonaut. Do you read me? Scotty, Miss Perkins, Ronnie, Argonaut crew, answer me. Where in Sam Hill is everybody? Captain Fathom and Professor Jorgensen are circling a seemingly deserted island in the sea dart in order to ascertain the whereabouts of a giant sperm whale which they believe has accidentally run aground. Can we take one more quick swing around? Maybe we missed something. Argonaut! Argonaut, come in, Argonaut. Do you read me? Scotty, Miss Perkins, Ronnie, Argonaut crew, answer me. Where in Sam Hill is everybody? Getting no response from the Argonaut at all, Max. Radio must have gone dead. We'll make this a fast swing around. Right. One more word from any of you. You understand? Or it will please Osaka, as divine protector of the sacred great mountain spirit, to silence your fighting tongue. Silence, I say! Osaka commands silence? Well, then ye better have great mountain spirit. Are you so deaf that you fail to hear the cry of the great mountain for his spirit mate? He cries for a woman. <laughs> On this night, 
for our children a sorrow, the offering of this war. Oh, why, but thirsty little. Fathom, wait. What do you see? I thought I saw a string of lights on that mountain slope. Ah, he's playing tricks on me, I guess. I see something else. Look at the base of the mountain. There. I don't see... You missed it. Air bubbles coming out of that rock wall. Could be an opening there. And the tides just covered it? A cave. A cavern. Let's take a close look. Listen to that, will you? It's coming from the volcano crater. But that's not the wind. Look there, Max. Is that blood in the sea? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Can we chance to look around down there? Yeah, let's. Here we are. And it's big enough for whales. Let's go as far as we can. Great Scott, did you hear that? Come on. There it goes again. It's our whale. We're close, but, but I can't see him. No whale, it's a dead end. Except for that shaft of light. It, it must be the core of the volcano. Could be an airspace up there, Max. Let's go up and see. There's our elusive friend. You're right. Easy, old timer. We're trying to help you. Looks like he blundered in here and couldn't find his way out, Max. And he wasn't the first. Look around. Can we steer him out of here, you think? Shouldn't be too much of a problem. An underwater speaker playing music would act as a guide. Set just outside the entrance. Ah! What the? That sounded like... Ah! It is. That's Perkins. Activate your jet tube, Max. Follow me. <laughs> oh, my children of sorrow, fall upon great spirit of the mountain. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, His great cry is met with humble offering of spirit mate. Oh. Oh. Ah. Thank the Lord. You see, Osaka, the shriek of the mountain was actually a whale trapped inside. They've been blundering into a big cavern in the mountain for centuries, probably. You see, we've set a speaker just outside the cavern mouth. We hope the music he hears will guide him out. A sense of war, long ago, we have worshipped a demon spirit which did not exist. And now you can be happy that you found truth and can live without demon spirits. Ah, so... There she blows! Yeah!